And we are live, and we've got part two of our webinar with Molly Bartelt. Uh, but before we start, I figure, um, you know, let's just see, give people a, a little bit of time to get into the webinar if they're going to join us live. Um, obviously, Molly and I, we always enjoy, um, you know, seeing where everyone's from. So, you know, in the chat, if you're here already, you know, introduce yourself, say where you're from. Uh, maybe we'll see. Uh, Maybe you're from one of the places that we're from, maybe you're from Wisconsin, maybe you're from upstate New York, say hello, especially. Um, but we have no favorites out here. Let's <laughs> see what uh let's see what we got. Anyone? Uh, we have one per we have one person from Watch Process to New York already watching, which is oh, my mother. <laughs> um let's Mom. see what else. <laughs> She says love back. <laughs> uh, let's see what we have. Figure, um, you know, let's just see. We have hello from Belgium. Hello, from, hello oh, to you, wow. Belgium. We have someone out. We have someone from Minnesota, Colorado. Oh, we're getting a good start. A nice, uh, a nice, well-rounded crowd. I think this might be the first time that I uh, remember someone from Belgium. I, we had, it's nice we actually have a, a Belgian woman in our office, someone from Brussels. Um, so it's always fun to see people from, from well, we got someone from Charlotte. We got Colorado, Ottawa, Can uh, Ottawa, Canada, California. Yeah, we're going all over the place. Wow. Um, this is great. It's always it's so fun to see this. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, Ottawa, Canada. Uh, Ottawa, Canada. There you go noise is coming from all over but i think it yeah, will just give it maybe another second um anywhere anyone uh molly anywhere uh you're hoping we get somebody from maybe someone across the world <laughs> well belgium's pretty exciting um but i'm always looking for my fellow cheese heads anybody from wisconsin <laughs> us miss us midwesterners kind of gotta stick together we're <laughs> we're always so nice <laughs> <laughs> it's true you are you are always so nice as opposed to us hardened new yorkers um <laughs> we got nebraska we got new orleans yeah we got really put people from everywhere it always happens cool. this way it's it's always a little surprising but always so nice to see um mm -hmm. but what do you say we get started sure all right let's do it well thank you to everyone who's here right now thanks so much for joining us live I'm Matthew from Photomine, and this is Organize Your Photos Once and For All, part two with professional photo organizer Mari, Molly Bartel. She's the co-founder of Pixology. Uh, they'll help you create photo estates and help you organize your photos. Um, now, if you haven't been here for part one, uh, th today's session is, like I said, part two of Molly's three-part masterclass in organizing your photos. So if you missed part one, you can find that on our Facebook page under videos or the live tabs there. Um, also, if you've RSVP'd to this event, after the webinar is over, we'll send an email with a couple of different links from Molly and from Photomine, as well as a, a recording of this specific one. And we'll also send part one as well. So you can make sure you have all of the videos there in case you, you, know, you miss something. Um, if you stumbled upon this webinar, and you just kind of, you know, came onto our Facebook page and found it. Well, thanks for joining. Uh, and you want part one as well, and you can't find it on our Facebook page, uh, feel free to reach out to our support team at support, uh, support at photomind.com. And we'll be happy, happy, happy to send it to you. Now, uh, a few more things before I let Molly take over, just a few quick reminders and announcements. Like I said, after the webinar, I'll, we'll be sending an email in the next few days or so that'll have a recording and like I said, the links, et cetera. Um, while the webinar is going on, if you have any questions, uh, please write them in the chat uh, and we'll get to as many as we can at the end and make a little Q and A. Uh, so whether they're for Photomine or for Molly, um, you know, please, uh, please put them in the chat. And lastly, uh, be on the lookout for RCP for part three of, the ch of Molly's masterclass, which we're very excited about. Finally put, a, finally put a close to this awesome three-part masterclass. Uh, and that'll be next Tuesday, July 26th, again at noon Eastern time. Um, and that'll be coming in a couple different forms, similar as uh, the way that we've promoted this one, whether through Facebook or an email, push notification uh, within the Photomine app, et cetera. But so uh, look out for that. 
And I think I'm done talking for now. Uh, Molly, why don't you take it away? I'm happy to. Thank you again, Matthew and PhotoMind, for letting me come and talk about something I'm so passionate about. We are on part two. And just to recap, last week we had an introduction. I talked about a variety of photo management programs that people might choose to manage their pictures. And then I introduced the roadmap to saving your photos once and for all. It's what we use here at Pixology. And I have found people can follow it and know that they're feeling you know, on the right path to getting this done. Today, we're gonna to talk about the F-O-C in the word focus. Find it all, organize it, and curate. Then next week, we'll be talking about using and saving your photos. And we'll also talk about handling tech issues because the best laid plan can always be derailed when you have a tech problem. So, <laughs> I believe firmly that good photo organization starts with folders on your computer, all right? On a PC, this is using your file explorer, and on a Mac, it's the finder. And we will be working with three main folders in this whole project, the photos to organize, scanned photos, and the master family photos folder. There is a key skill with whether you're using the Finder or the PC File Explorer, having two folder windows open and being able to move folders and files around is really, it just makes your photo organizing so much easier. If you need help with this, please just go to YouTube and search, you know, using the Finder or using the file explorer and kind of watch them. There's a lot of good videos out there. And in this example, you can see I have two folders open and I'm dragging one set of pictures over to another. This is critical to being able to do this. So I wanted to point that out. And because we are working on our computers, you do need to be aware and cognizant to back up your work, all right? That means a manual backup, most likely copying your folders to an external hard drive and doing that every time you do a major amount of work in your folders is really important. If you make a lot of changes and your computer crashes, it's so frustrating to have to backtrack and figure out where you were. There are automatic backups like Carbonite or Backblaze, and then there are syncing backups. I just want to caution people, if you're thinking that OneDrive or Dropbox is a good backup, be careful. When these are installed on your computer, they can change your system folders, and it gets complicated. So I like the manual backup is my favorite. And then an automatic backup is uh, like Carbonator Backblaze would be my preference. Okay, <laughs> just to review the FOCUS acronym, here we have it, find it all, organize, curate, use your photos and save your photos. We are looking to create the simplest maintainable workflow, something that you can come back to if life gets in the way. And that is the plan, okay? We talked about the whole plan last week, and I know it's a lot to look at. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first start with digital photos, and we're gonna focus on find it all, organize and curate. So let's go. <laughs> Finding it all literally means finding all the places that you have digital pictures. All right, from your smartphone to USB drives, disks, camera cards, all of those places that have photos, you need to find them all and gather them to one location. And you might need an adapter like it, it is pictured here. There are so many different things that you can connect to your computer and computers nowadays don't seem to have the same ports that they used to. So you can go on Amazon and find this or find a CD um, adapter so that you can copy a CD contents to your laptop and more. 
when we find it all, we are bringing it into the photos to organize folder. And I just have, you know, my clients make generic folders for each of the places they could be getting pictures from. So I have a couple of screenshots here where you can see camera cards, CDs of photos, Google photos, iPhone photos, OneDrive. There are pictures all over the place. So having a folder for each location is how we find it easy to kind of keep track of our progress. So you find it all and bring it to the photos to organize folder. And I just have an example here of the two folders or the two folders being open. On the left hand side, I have my Apple iPhone connected and I'm in the DCIM folder. And I've selected all of those folders, which if you have an older operating system, they really won't make a lot of sense uh, until you actually look at the pictures inside. I'm just copying them all and I'm bringing them over to the right, which is a iPhone photos folder as of you know the date 2021 when I did this last year. So that's the process you're just copying or moving photos to the photos to organize folder and you keep repeating that with all of the places that you have pictures and i find it helps to make a tracking sheet so i might make the first column be the location where i had the pictures and then the second column would be that I've put it in the photos to organize folder. Maybe you jot some notes down about what you did, but you're, you're kind of tracking in that way. You know, if you have like a, a question that you want to come back to, you could put it in your tracking sheet and refer back to it later. So once we have it all in one location, and please know, I... I'm going through this this plan in, you know in this half hour and sometimes you know it takes me eight to ten weeks to work with clients in my course for them to understand it all people do often need to review and look back and feel free to watch this again and again if it will help you so we find it all and then we organize it so we want to organize in each of the folders that we have in the photos to organize folder. This means cleaning folders up, renaming folders, and checking metadata to help name the folders. So let's take a look at this. There, there on the left-hand side are the folders that I have in this example. We're gonna work folder by folder, and we are gonna rename them with this formula. All right, I have an example on the left hand side of how I frequently find people have named photo folders is kind of inconsistent there. When you use the formula and you change the names of those folders, they automatically sort alphabetically and chronologically then. And now you have something that makes a little more sense. Here's another example. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have all these variety of names for folders. And on the right-hand side, I just renamed them and I'm showing them in the list view, the details view there. And you can see now we have kind of a nice organization of what was going on in 2019. And you could even you know, further work with this, but the formula makes working with pictures much easier and it's invaluable when we get to deduplicating. So if obvious, name the folder with the formula. Sometimes you have a mix of photos, just describe what it is for the time being and then maybe come back to it later. You, you know, you don't wanna be bogged down. Use nested folders, folders within folders to keep it manageable, and then type possible duplicates in front of the name if you think the folder might have duplicates. So on the right hand side, you can see now that my camera cards has these nested folders, folders within folders, and they're nicely named with the year first and, and the formula. And that's what we're looking to do. We just want to get things organized so that it's just, you know what you're looking at. 
The metadata also might help. Metadata is information that is connected digitally to your picture that tells all sorts of things. This is a screenshot from the PC File Explorer, and you can see the file name, the date taken, and the size. And right below the file name, you can see that it's a JPEG, all right? This metadata, the date taken and the file size are really important. On a PC in the File Explorer, you know, when you right click, you can get the properties. It's very helpful. On a Mac, not so much. The Mac Finder, uh, when you control click or right click to get the info, you might, you'll get the file name and the size. Sometimes the date taken might be accurate. I mean, this says the photo was created and that actually was the date, but sometimes that doesn't match. And on a Mac Finder, it is not as helpful. For those of you who do have PCs, when you're in the File Explorer details view, you can right click across the top, like where the date is here. And when you right click, you can add a date taken column. This is super helpful for organizing a whole bunch of pictures at once. And right now it's just listed alphabetically here. If I sorted this date taken column, all I would, all I have to do is click it and the date would sort by you know the either the earliest first or the newest first and sorting that way allows you to select a bunch of pictures all at once you know and move them to a 2016 folder this date taken column is really helpful on a mac user they don't uh they do not have <laughs> that the date taken column and i don't know why so you can see here these are pictures that actually were dated for 2021-06, and the date created was the date that it was copied to that folder. All right, tracking your progress. Again, as you're organizing and renaming folders, you can jot some notes down in your little chart here, if you like, of where you've gotten so that in case you stop, and you want to come back in a in a, a couple days and a, a week or two goes by, you can note where you are going to be starting work again. And I also noted that there are possible duplicates. So you know, kind of keeping track of that is really helpful. So that was organize. The next step, you know, once your folders are shaped up, then we're going to curate. And for me, curating means cleaning up and making something significant, you know, making it come together in a way that's easily usable. So uh, this part includes deduplicating and consolidating photos. All right. The duplicate finding process, you have to get a duplicate finding program. On a Mac, Photo Sweeper is the go-to app. On a PC, there's several out there. Um, I like Duplicate Photos Fixer Pro, but remember, these programs are not like a 100% guarantee. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of digging to figure out what, what it's recognizing as duplicates and what it's not. For the most part, these are extremely helpful. When you install a duplicate finding program on your computer, you're gonna use it many times and run it in small batches. Some people have, you know, upwards of 20,000 pictures. And if you just ran the duplicate finder on the photos to organize folder, and you search through all 20,000 pictures, it might find 4,000 duplicates. But being comfortable deleting the duplicates is more than just, you know, allowing it to auto mark the duplicates and delete them. You actually want to know which pictures are being deleted. So small batches. So I like to compare my 2018 Google photos to my 2018 iPhone photos, those two folders together. And then I know my iPhone is what I originally took the pictures with. So anything that's in Google that's a duplicate could be deleted. 
you really have to just kind of start in small batches and gain confidence. There is a way to auto mark to delete, and you can tell the program which pictures you want to be marked for deletion. So the ones that are larger size and have the original date, you would try to keep those pictures. In addition, these duplicate finding programs allow you to find and delete similar photos. And how handy is that when we, we take 20 pictures to get the best expression on the kids in the family? So I have a couple screenshots here on a, a Mac, the photo sweeper. You can see I just have listed here two picture, two sets of pictures that it found. And <clears throat> The uh, ones that are green are going to be the ones that are kept, and I could change my mind about what is kept. When you select one of the photos, right at the bottom, you can see the path of where that picture is. So this folder, this photo that is marked for deletion here is actually in a folder that says probable duplicates uh, Milio. Milio is just one program that I have stored pictures in and I actually like it, but um, I was thinking this was duplicate, so that's easy to delete, all right? On a PC, this Duplicate Photos Fixer Pro works pretty similar. So in this example, uh, you can see that I have found 895 duplicates. And right now, the photo on the right is selected. They're both the same size. They both seem to have the same date on them. And uh, on the right-hand side, I can see a little bit more of the metadata. And what I'm noticing is the date is probably the created date. So that's why looking down at the bottom, you know, seeing what folder it in gives you the clues. All that work you did organizing your pictures will really pay off when you're using your duplicate finder. Once you've eliminated all the duplicates, and that could take you a little bit to compare all of them, then you're gonna consolidate photos from different sources together and move the cleaned up folders and photos to the master family photos folder. All right, here's an example. On the left-hand side, I have the photos to organize and I, I just typed in done here, all right, because I, I had them organized and I had them deduplicated and I actually moved all of the folders over to the master family photo. So now on the right hand side, I don't necessarily keep track of which pictures were taken on my iPhone. The master family has all of my originals from my iPhone over here. Okay. And then you can actually delete the folder that's empty in the photos to organize side. And you're just going to keep working your way through. So here in Google, I have 2011 photos. I could compare that to my 2011 photos that are in my master family folder now and see what are duplicates. If there are no duplicates in the 2011 photos, in my Google Photos folder, then I'm going to take those pictures from this left side and I'm gonna drag them into my 2011 photos on the master family photo side. All right, so it's just cleaning up and consolidating pictures. Again, in the, you know, the kind of a curate phase, we are going to take some notes. I like to write down, you know, how many photos were deleted so that <laughs> when I'm talking with my clients, they can know how many were deleted. It's like a sign of success. And then um, down in the camera cards, you can see the rest were consolidated to the pictures folders, whatever notes that are going to be helpful for you. Um, you can even highlight, you know, where you want to start the next time. So that is the tracking sheet. And the next phase is moving them to the master folder here. We get to here, once you have your photos all organized and out of the photos to organize folder, you've completed a major step in the process. 
the people that I have taught this system to usually take, it's at least, I'm going to say six to 12 weeks minimum for them to organize all their digital pictures. And, and that's not working all the time. It's just, you know, when they have time, they come back and they, they work on a portion of it. So you can kind of see this is not something that you necessarily can fix in one weekend, unless you're really determined. So we did all of the finding and organizing and curating in a really fast overview here. We're going to now talk about the print pictures, all right, because we need to get our print pictures to that master folder as well. So shifting to print photos, find it all means physically finding all of the print photos. And boy, they can be just anywhere, albums, scrapbooks, bins, frames, baggies, suitcases, anywhere else. You want to bring them all to one location and plan on this taking, you know, a, a couple months um, unless you're really able to, to dig in. Um, it takes time. So get it all to one location in a bedroom, on a table, uh, and, and gather it up. Take time to find it all because it, it's harder to add pictures later on in the process. So once we find it all, we start the organizing. <clears throat> in our process of organizing print pictures, we have the first inventory and sort. So we take all of that material and we divide it up by decades and major categories. We also might set the other media types aside. So in this first inventory and sort, everything that was on this table has now been divided up by the media types and then the different decades. There's memorabilia and we have a section for unknown. So you divide it up and you get through it. This should not take you too long. Um, we we did this in about four hours, but we're pretty we're pretty efficient here. I have found that people usually need to take a couple days for this, maybe a week, but you don't want to be lingering over anything. You have to be clinical and efficient. Then you go into the second sort where you take each major category and now you divide it by years. So like the decades become years. All right. And this is the table that used to be this. So when you start breaking things down and removing pictures from albums, it becomes, you know, it consolidates really nicely. Okay, so that's the second sort, getting everything divided by years. And this is kind of an example um, that might be helpful. We have the blue dividers are for the decades. And then the green dividers are for the years. On the back table, in the back there, there is all the duplicates that are on the back table. There's always tons of these, okay, and repetitive pictures even. So that's the second sort. This is like the heavy duty organizing, all right? There is no time for a conversation or calling people to tell them you found something cool. We need to get through it or you'll never get through it, okay? So you get through that second organization and then we come to the curate phase. And this is where we're kind of going through the pictures again. And now we take each year and organize them by month. So in this photo, we have orange dividers for the months. And that way you can kind of see like a hierarchy of, you know, your, your timeline. And when you go through it that third time, you can see how pictures come together the months you know there's just a natural progression of events through the year you're going to have valentines in the beginning and then the holidays at the end and you know where your birthdays are this is a very effective way to uh, get your pictures fine-tuned to be really curated okay and uh, these photo boxes are available from michael's you can order them 12 for like 50 dollars. i think they'll ship them to you when you do that third sort, it really brings things back together. It is time consuming. I am not going to try to fool you on that, but it's really worth it. 
And then, you know, if you really want archival boxes, uh, there's archival boxes that we sell. Um, there's other places like Archival Methods or Gaylord that you can order as well. And I just want to point out that that picture in the center, there's duplicates even back in the early days. It's always amazing to me to see how many duplicates people might have <laughs> through the years. So then you get it all organized and it's perfect. And now, and actually I should tell you, it does not need to be perfect, okay? Do not try to get it to be perfect because we'll never get there. And it's good enough. I really should slap my hand for saying that. When you feel like you're ready to scan, you have options. And um, there are quite a variety out there. We, we know PhotoMine can be a great tool for this. And PhotoMine even offers um, film box where you can do negatives as well. They have a whole suite of services that might be beneficial to you. you there's portable wand scanners, printer scanners, photo specific flatbed scanners, high speed scanners, and even camera scanning. I like to, I'm just going to put these all up there. <clears throat> um, the printer scanner is good for a few flatbeds, but you cannot <laughs> do all those photo boxes on a flatbed. A photo box holds about a thousand photos. So there, you need a high speed scanner and the Epson Fast Photo 680W is fantastic. Um, easy photo scan, rent scanners, they'll ship you one. And then you can always find a local business to scan. We scan a lot of photos in our area or you can send them off to another company. After the scanning is done, you are gonna want to run your duplicate finding program. There's just always duplicates in there. And once, once you've cleaned the duplicates up, you can move those, con those folders over to your master family photos folder. So now on the right-hand side, you can see there are you know, layers of pictures through the years. And it's you know, the whole family photo collection in one place. And it, this folder, this master family photos folder is easy to, again, back up to an external hard drive and, um, and know that it's safe. So we get everything to the master folder, all right? And it should look, it should, it's just a great feeling to have all of that done. And I realize we crammed this process in pretty quick here you know, just have heart and know, you know, you can get through this. I'm here rooting people on all the time to continue on organizing their photos. Once this is done, then you can choose your photo management solution. And for some people, it might just be folders, um, but it might be something else. And then you can go into using and preserving your photos for future generations, which we will be talking about next week. All right, I know that was a lot. <laughs> I'm so happy to take any questions that you know might be out there because um, it, it's a lot to, to kind of assimilate. Thanks so much, Molly. Yeah, if you have questions, continue to write them in the chat. And, uh, and we have time for like a, a handful of questions before, um, before we call it. Um, so let's see what we have so far. Um, what if you're not sure of the year and that's in the context of dividing and organizing by years and the relevant months? Yep, good question. So um, usually people can kind of guess what decade a photo is in. So we will have batches of photos that might be estimated 1980s or estimated 1994. So you can have a section that just has estimated if that helps. And sometimes we literally do have a, a batch of photos that's unknown. <laughs> <laughs> and it shouldn't be that many at the end of the day. We usually find that the system, you can identify at least three quarters, if not more of the pictures dates, roughly. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, someone said, I have several albums that are disorganized, but the photos are glued in. Taking them out would damage them. Any tips for organizing those? Yep, so when we have photos that are attached to pages, um, we actually will, 
kind of get a, another divider that's a little longer. We'll cut out the pages that we want um, to scan to flatbed scan. And then, um, and actually PhotoMind's one of the apps that I that people have used to scan pictures that are stuck in, in albums like that. But sometimes, you know, we'll have a, a, a section, you know, the, from 1970s, those are a good sticky album years, you know, that, and we'll just have those uh, set when we scan them. <clears throat> then, um, then we usually don't save the pictures because and, and the pages because they're kind of yucky. All right. And now, outside of years, do you have any suggestions of uh, different topics for categories to organize photos into? Yeah. So the decades are, you know, one area. I think career is a great subcategory, um, travel. We have people who, you know, have horses, so they might have their horse photos through the years in their own category. If there's an area of interest that your family has had, you know, that you'd like to have those separate, <clears throat> I think that would make sense as well. All right, do we have anything else? Anyone have some last minute questions? It seems like seems like you've answered many many people's questions today huh i'm afraid they're like oh my gosh <laughs> how do you i you, you scared you did i hope you didn't scare everyone away I'm just <laughs> i i know it's a lot but you know we're here are you know to answer questions you know even into next week we'll have more time then for sure <laughs> all right here we got it. we have a couple more yeah uh, i have many many photos that are inherited from the past some from like the late 1800s early 1900s uh, what do you suggest I do with the photos of my family back to my birth? Or would you suggest I take the photos back to my birth and do them separately than the ones are from, you know, my my older family history? So sometimes people have like family groupings, you know, the ancestor, you know, the lines like the paternal side or the maternal side. Um, I think it is helpful to have a major category for, you know, those those sections of the family that you have a lot of material for photos and you probably have documents as well. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, let's, where'd that question go? Um, any recommendations for sources to read or specialists to consult with tiny, uh, with tin types? And I don't know how to say this word, dagger types. Dagger types. Yep, dagger types. Yeah. And um, tin types. Um, I, I think if you have questions about like dating them, the photo detective, Maureen Taylor, is great. You know, working with them. You know, we've we've had them here and I love them. You're so fortunate to have some of that. Um, you know, you can get archival materials to store them in. Uh, but we usually, you know, we use, um, I want to say, I don't want to say what I, I think we use like uh, Q-tips and um Oh, I'm going to I'm going to answer this at the next one, but something to clean them. You know, we have a little bit of a um, a little system that we go through when we have them because often they're dusty and, and they need cleaning before scanning. But once they're clean, you, we lay them right on our flatbed to scan and capture the image. Now, someone someone asked, what are the best photo scanners for scanning old photos? And I think my answer is going to be very uh, obvious. I, of course, would say uh, photo mine, but I imagine that means, you know, in terms of quality and speed and all that kind of things any uh anything that you can add well um the 680w the epson fast photo 680w i i hear a lot of people like it it has it has good color correction um but uh flatbed you know epson's the the, the name that we usually stick with but there's others out there if if need be mm -hmm. Great, thanks, Mike. I think it's about time for us to go. If you have any questions on uh, any last minute questions, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, at support at photomine.com or reach out to Molly. Um, and we'll send all of her information in an email that follows. Uh, but thank you so much, Molly, for doing this again. We're really excited for part three. Uh, and finally, we can put, we can wrap all this up and kind of have it make sense to everyone from start to finish. <laughs> I, I, I hope it does. And I think, you know, 
if people just know you can get through it and you know, we're, che we're here cheering for you, you know, there's a lot and it's so much fun to see it come together. So it's a journey. <laughs> Well, well, thanks so much for uh, thanks for so much for presenting today and last week and also next week. Um, so I guess this is gonna this is gonna okay. conclude part two for us today. Um, like I said earlier, we're gonna send an email with all uh, you know with a, a link to the recording. So if you missed anything in this session, you can then watch it, or you can send it to others who perhaps you know that weren't able to make it. Uh, and we'll also include part one if you didn't get uh, have a chance to catch that as well. Uh, in addition, we'll have a couple other links from us, some things, you know, specific to PhotoMind, how to get in touch with Molly if you want to schedule a call with her, um, you know, check out her YouTube page, um, et, et cetera, et cetera. And also we'll include a link, uh, we'll include a little bit of a, a treat uh, for PhotoMind's Amazon page. We have a bunch of accessories that make scanning photos a lot easier. Um, so be sure to check that out. That email will be coming in the next couple of days. Uh, as well as keep an eye out for uh, the RCP page for um, the RCP for part three of Molly's uh, awesome, awesome, awesome masterclass. But until then, uh, thanks so much for joining and we'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you. Bye-bye.